He's early. This is the early start of the video. Do not be confused. Yeah. Don't run through the hall naked thinking. What happened to your video, Scott? I don't know. Mm. Do you see it, Jenny? Scott has down. It briefly happened. Talk, Scott. Hold on. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. What's funny is in preview, I see that you're moving. What the heck? Okay, wait a minute. Your video is really jerky for me. Yeah. This video is fine. It happened as soon as we went live. Am I all jacked up now? Oh, now you're back. But it's you're coming back. Am I coming back? Yeah. You're still a little uh, stop motion. Are are you stop motion today? Maybe that's all it is. Today, let's see. Scott become claymation today. You can do stop motion with more than just clay. Wait, I think he just froze. And he probably left, right? He probably yeah. tried to fix that something and then. Yeah. His, uh... Well, maybe we he's out of phase, play. like Jordy and Ensign Rowe. Yeah. That was the best character they never really used. Thank you, Scott's Internet, for messing up as soon as I went live, though. That was awesome. Yeah. You don't know you're beautiful. Now we're going to get a takedown. Great. Sorry. No, it couldn't be just for that. <laughs> no. I can't sing that well. But as soon as I, I do this and go like, Whoa, she's singing? And I'm therefore reacting? Hold then on. you're going to get a take. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is mean. You know, I, I feel bad for the Fine Brothers because oh, it's I do hard too. to make money off the thing you do online. And very few people have successfully done it. I think. I'm I, wonder, I wonder if Scott's like screaming right now. Like, can you hear me? Yeah! If he is, no, we can't. And your video is black for me. Or his video is black. For me. No, he's gone. Yeah, he's he he didn't even he's have video he's anymore. Rebooting, I can tell. So he's dropped out. Uh, I'm this is of the morning stream, and I this can. This is happening you. live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we go now to Tom this Merritt. This was not planned. We will make efforts to get Scott Johnson back, unless a backhoe cut his internet again. Uh, but the fact that we actually saw him leave makes me think that that's yeah, not, he's rebooting. not what it, he's just rebooting. Thing. Okay. He said that? Where did he say that? No, I just, oh, I you're just guessing. That's a good stream. guess. I listen to the morning stream. I yeah. know these things. You know what he does. I know. Oh, they downloaded my files. I'll just check some email while we wait for Scott. I hope that's okay. My next door came in. Uh, oh, okay. Clothing rep, reasonable plumber. Solar power advice and staging or just refreshing your home or office. Oh my gosh, that sounds like a poem. I know. Doesn't it? Oh, mine came in. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. Ooh. Garbage gridlock. Bring Kramer home, lost dog. I exist, but oh, is my camera working now? Yeah, you're back. We see you. You're a little oh, pixely, but oh, I think it's just adjusting. Okay. All right. Don't panic. I think I'm okay. I think this is good. Know your tell is. I've got my towel. And don't panic. I won't. Uh, all right. I think everything's okay. I've got this weird video drive. And we just started streaming on Diamond Club. Oh, perfect. Which means everything is working well now. Best I can tell, I am okay. All right. Sounds like we should just go do a show right now. I think you're right. Here we oh. go. All right. Two hundredths of one percent of the Daily Tech News Show were brought to you by me. If you would like to decrease my already meager equity, go to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, February 3rd, 2016. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me, Scott Johnson, all the way from the mountainous land of Salt Lake City. How are you, sir? I'm fine. It's also very snowy here, and I'm happy to be here in the early part of the hardest month to pronounce. February. You do it just fine, but everyone I know struggles. My dad used to say February, like that. Yeah, yeah. that's wrong. I can tell you that. Library. Right. Library. That Pry. was <laughs> the Pry in February, I'll go to the library. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But talking tech news with you on the third of that fine month is perhaps the highlight of my day. Uh, we are going to talk about a an offhand comment from the CEO of one of America's greatest mall chains uh, that indicates Amazon might be opening a bunch of physical locations. But to start, we do the headlines. 
Microsoft announced Wednesday it has acquired SwiftKey, the makers of that software keyboard uh, and the SDK, for Android and iOS. SwiftKey learns from users how to anticipate what word they might type next, which means that I play a little cat and mouse game with it and, and it improves my vocabulary. Uh, Microsoft says that predictive technology like this aligns with their aims to build intelligent systems, as well as uh, gives them a chance to integrate it into Microsoft's existing WordFlow product, a similar product. Microsoft also said it will continue to develop the Swift Key keyboard for iOS and Android. Uh, that's in keeping with what they've always said uh, with other products that they've purchased. I'm glad that they do that. Um, total side note, doesn't have a ton to do with this, except I saw Notch on Twitter today, the previous owner, uh, Mark, uh, Marcus Person, the previous owner of Minecraft, who sold that property for some billions of dollars to Microsoft. His tweet today said a little something that made me wonder about the relationship. He basically said, well, I guess there's one more product I won't be using anymore, and that's SwiftKey, Ooh. based on this news. And it makes me wonder if he had a bad experience. Really? Yeah. I mean, he, he can be a little trolly sometimes, you know, as can we all. I'm not, not singling him out. But he's not somebody who just speaks in PR speak. So That's, that's true. To, to, to some, I, I suppose to some that is a good sign, but it was a, it was a telling moment as yeah. he laid this huge pile of money. And it definitely is part of the machine learning wars. The machine learning wars are on. Everybody's trying to acquire various pieces of technology they can use to become the next great artificial intelligence machine learning company. Uh, and SwiftKey is is a nice little piece of that. You know, it, it it's it's machine learning is very specific to predicting speech, right? Predicting what you're going to say next. But that could have all kinds of applications in other arenas outside of just a keyboard. Yeah, no, I think this is a good buy for them. It'll be fascinating to see what they do with it. Google SVP of, re, or of search, rather, Amit Senghai posted on Google Plus that he'll be retiring at the end of this month. He'll be gone. He wrote, my dream Star Trek computer has become a reality or becoming a reality, and it's far better uh, than what I ever imagined. Google VP of Engineering and Head of Art Artificial Intelligence, John Guillaume de Guerrera, will also, or will take over. So he's out. No more search guy. In with the new guy. Now, Ahmed's been there since early days. Uh, he became a Google fellow in 2001 uh, when the company was only a few years old. Uh, so probably not much to read into this other than he's ready to retire and he's got a nice big fat stack of Google stock that's $8.65 earnings per share uh, led him to believe, you know, maybe I could retire. Uh, and John, John Andrea, being the artificial intelligence guy, means that, again, the machine learning wars continue and Google wants to make sure that they take what they're learning about AI and machine learning and apply it even more so to their search results in Google now and things like that. His, star, his nerdy Star Trek reference is not lost on me and I appreciate the fact that a lot of those guys, especially those that were there in the early days, have that connection to the work they're doing. I, well, that, it, wow. that, that's what Google wants. They want your search box and, and when you talk to it, okay, name of product uh <laughs> they want it to be like star trek where you said computer you know how, how how many neutrons do i need to reverse the polarity on to make this work and the computer just tells you uh, Google Fiber announced Wednesday it will work with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development's Connect Home initiative to provide gigabit internet service to public housing at no cost the West Bluff property in Kansas City will be the first to receive gigabit internet as part of this program. Uh, Google then intends to expand to other locations in Kansas City and eventually to all public housing in all of the cities served by Google Fiber. Uh, that would include Salt Lake City at some point, or at least Provo. I forget where we're at with that right now. But uh, Yeah, I think, no, I think you're on the map anyway. I mean, and, and there's lots of other cities under consideration. Uh, Austin, uh, for instance, is, is in, the, in the works already. So uh, this, you know, if, if Google Fiber continues to perform as an independent ISP and not just a way to, to blaze a trail to encourage competition, and, and I can't tell if Google has decided that or not, uh, it could eventually be a big boon to public housing. 2016 seems like so far a little bit of the year of rollouts. Um, there's these guys, we talked last week about former Aereo folks putting together a program to get ISPs to people's homes wirelessly with, with huge speeds. And Yeah, with and Starry. So yeah, Starry, that was it. And these, these things keep coming up, and I don't know what that means except to say infrastructure seems to be evolving at the very least. Uh, at least it feels like that in 2016. Well, and it is having, I don't, you could argue whether it's uh, uh, as an effect of this, but Comcast is also rolling out gigabyte 
or uh, yeah, uh, gigabit per second uh, uh, service in more places. They announced more cities today. So yeah, there's there's a ton of folks out there um, rolling out in the United States anyway. Yeah. Uh, service. Well, Fitbit unveiled the Alta today. Uh, no, not the ski resort. Twenty minutes for me. A hundred and thirty dollar fitness tracker. This is another band that will feature an OLED touch display and automatic activity tracking. The Alta has swappable bands in different colors, plus a leather band and metal bracelet for 30 and 60 and then 100 respectively. The Alta will ship in March in North America and the rest of the world in April. Classic bands will be available at launch with the metal bracelet coming in the summer and the leather coming later uh, on after that. So, uh, yeah, once again, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of numbers have been coming out lately that fitness trackers and uh, health bands have not really seen the hit people thought they might in the face of both Google and Apple getting heavy into the into the watch market. And uh, instead, it seems like there are more products coming out that do more things and are also attracting, I don't know, the more fashion conscious among us. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, inter it's interesting. I think everybody else thought that this was going to be the death nail of those things, and it certainly doesn't seem to be slowing yet. Yeah, in a sense, it may have made more people aware that these sorts of things existed and said, well, I don't want to spend $350. I'd rather spend $99. And this has a clock on it and also tracks my fitness, which is everything I need. Microsoft's got a new version uh, of the band coming as well. So yeah, this is it's this is an, a market that is ripening and watches may not be where it is most successful. Yeah, there's a desire to think that what we want is this analog to what watches used to be or still are for people. And maybe what we really want is a whole new bit of thinking about a wearable. Yeah. Where you wear it, what it does, how it functions. It may be a completely different paradigm and it's so easy to just say, well, we need a watch and then we'll expand from there. Kind of like phones, yeah. but I'm not so sure anymore. Well, and that's why it's smart for companies like Jawbone and Fitbit uh, to make fancier looking trackers uh, mm -hmm. that are $130, not $350, but still have some style to them. Uh, one of the things my wife did with her Fitbit uh, just a couple of days ago, she bought some third-party bands because they were different colors. She's just like, I just want to, you know, want to be able to accessorize with it. So that is definitely, when you're talking about wearables, the fashion is, you know, as much as maybe somebody like me is like, man, what does it matter? Just make it black. A lot of, a lot of people want to be able to, to wear a wearable in the way they wear other kinds of jewelry. Cisco issued their annual report on mobile traffic, estimating by 2020, 5.54 billion people will have a mobile phone. And CNET's Roger Chang, not Chang, Chang, uh, points out 5.3 billion will have electricity by 2020. So more people will have phones than electricity by 2020. Wrap your head about around that one. Uh, only 3.5 billion people will have running water by 2020. Cisco forecast mobile data traffic will grow to 366.8 exabytes by 2020. Phones will make up 81% of that traffic and more than 75% of that traffic will be video. The global average network speed uh, should rise to 6.5 megabits per second by then, about triple what it is now. Uh, again, global average uh, for everywhere. Thanks to Mecha Gobbler for posting this on the subreddit. Mecha Gobbler, scariest name on the internet today. Also, I would just say uh, that sounds crazy to me, but it does, I guess, give you a, a, I don't know, some insight as to how big this is. I mean, sometimes you forget, like we've all got phones. It's now a normal part of life. Flip phones are a thing of the past. All it takes is watching some show from the early 2000s to be reminded that all that stuff has changed. But I, I guess I hadn't realized how much that's, yeah. that's crazy to me. More, well, more. And Curtis B says, how will they charge their phones? I think that's an obvious question, especially for someone living in the developed world where we all assume you have electricity in your home. Uh, it, there are loads of ways people are carrying sm smartphones without or having, or maybe not even smartphones, but carrying mobile phones without even having electricity in their home. Uh, there are stores that will sell you charging time. Uh, sometimes there are public charging stations. I know in Asia, charging banks are very, very popular. Sometimes they're free and ad supported, sometimes there's not. But again, you can charge up your phone and, you know, if it's a smaller, cheaper phone, it may run for a couple of days on a charge. So you can, you can see where you don't have to have electricity at home as long as you have access to electricity somewhere. Mm, I'm no expert in socioeconomic issues, but it seems to me that that adoption rate will actually help the other number raise as well. Because yeah. when you're talking about, even though it's sort of individualized infrastructure, you need to start supporting that uh, on a broader basis. And it seems like maybe 
more electricity to more homes. I don't know if it'll help the running water problem, but it'll certainly probably bump those numbers up. Yeah. Uh, where are we here? Yahoo. Oh, Yahoo. I, I, I didn't want to go there either, Billy. I, yeah, I I'm trying to it. avoid the Yahoo thing, but I can't. I guess it's time. Uh, Yahoo bought Tumblr in 2013 for $1.1 billion, if you remember. I do. And BuzzFeed reports Yahoo announced it has reduced the blogging service's value by a whopping 23%. That is about $230 million. Uh, Yahoo wrote down $4.5 billion in the value of various corporate units and uh, has announced that it will lay off 15% of its staff and pursue an aggressive strategic plan. Uh, as, as they mentioned yesterday right here on the show, Yahoo's quarterly revenue was up 1.5% and beat estimates. Uh, but still, um, I remember I told you this earlier, just back and forth chatting, that I felt like um, Tumblr was a little expensive at $1.1 billion, and that this doesn't necessarily surprise me. But you made a really good point. It was on them to have a strategy to make it a profitable arm of the company, and it doesn't sound like they're there, maybe just not yet, but not there today. Yeah. I mean, they're talking about reducing investment in Flickr as part of their coming strategy. That was one of the things Marissa Meyer mentioned yesterday. Uh, it it's sad. Uh, it is a very complex situation. I get that. But Tumblr is popular and should be successful. It should be doing as well as an Instagram or a Snapchat at this point. It shouldn't be seen as something that needs to be written down as a failed investment. But maybe this just means they overpaid, uh, like you say. I, I think that's a fa that's probably the, the fairest point here. But uh, I, I I start to sympathize with the investors in Yahoo who are saying, just sell it off because Tumblr might be better off owned by someone else or independently owned uh, under some venture capital ownership. It, and Flickr might be better off that way too. Uh, it, is, it is sad to say, but even though Yahoo you know, raised its revenue, its market value is still less than the value of the Alibaba stock plus Yahoo Japan that it owns, which it wants to sell off, which would imply that Yahoo itself is not worth anything. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. It scares me a little bit for these properties that they purchased and, and have done good by. I mean, and Tumblr's not a worse service because they bought them. That's great. In fact, yeah. they've improved a lot of things, and uh, it feels like the back end's a little stronger. Like, all that stuff is good, and just... It's also maybe really hard to change or tweak without getting a very specific community up in arms and moving off to other services. So, yeah. I don't know. Challenges abound. Well, I could have put a story about Google starting to test their self-driving cars in Kirkland, Washington here, but pretty much that's all I'd have to say about that is, there you go, they're, it's their third city. Instead, uh, I'm going to say thanks to Starfury Zeta for posting this one in the subreddit. Technology Review reports that researchers from the University of North Carolina in Charlotte, led by Jason Marmon, have developed a transistor that controls current with laser light shined on a wire made of cadmium and selenium that's only a few atoms thick. Now, why is that important? Uh, for one, it can conduct when illuminated and insulate when dark. You just turn on the light, conducts. Turn off the light, doesn't conduct. No source, no drain, no gate. Uh, they can be made smaller than the current nanometer wide field effect transistors, which could lead to faster processors and, you know, keeping Moore's law healthy. Uh, but the next step is to figure out how to send light to each transistor at a decent power efficiency and speed. So they, they've got to figure out how to manufacture these, how to make these into chips, basically. Uh, still, someday light effect transistors uh, might be the thing that's powering your fast new processor and uh, making sure Moore's Law has a little more life. Did I get any closer to a future, not to dip too deep into current, uh, X-Files reboots, but uh, into free energy and the ability to sort of pull energy from around things rather than have to consume anything? Yeah, sadly, no. This doesn't do anything. <laughs> doesn't even touch on that. Uh, you yep. need energy to run the laser. Uh, yep. So, you know, that's that's just part of it. It, w it might use... It might use less power. That That is undetermined. Uh, but that wouldn't be because of, because of free energy. Well, I was getting excited. Yeah, uh, sorry. Several ad-blocking extensions for Samsung's new Android internet browser have been having trouble with Google's Play Store. This is too bad. Adblock Fast was removed from the store and told it violated Section 4.4 of Developer Distribution Agreement, uh, prohibiting interfering with the service of a third party. Crystal is still available, but its uh, update was blocked for that same reason. Adblock Plus has not been affected. So, so it's uh, a little murky what's actually going on here. 
Uh, it, on the surface of it, you could say, oh, uh, Google doesn't like Samsung doing ad blocking because they're an ad company, which, which may be part of it, uh, maybe all of it. But the fact that Adblock Plus has gone through just fine makes me think there's something these blockers are doing that Google doesn't like specifically, and Adblock Plus might not be doing it, and that's why it's been allowed to stay. Uh, but keep in mind, this is just ad blockers put in the Play Store independently of anything else, so as an APK, for a Samsung browser. Uh, so maybe there's some misinterpretation, but I mean, the biggest part of this story to me is the fact that they can't get a straight answer out of Google. They, they've gotten communication saying, look at via section 4.4, don't violate section 4.4 and you'll be fine, you can resubmit. And what they wanna know is like, well, how? why do you think we're violating 4.4? Explain that to us and we'll fix it. Yeah, the, the mere fact that it's an ad blocker sounds like it violates 4.4, and that but if that's allowed for Adblock Plus and others, then I don't understand. I mean, by blocking ads, you are interfering with the service of a third party. Like, literally, that's what you're doing. Yeah. And if that's okay, like it seems to be for Adblock Plus, well, and it's for, not okay for those guys. Firefox does ad blocking on Android, which interferes with third parties that want to serve ads, but right. it's allowed. Right. Uh so, so then it becomes, well, maybe it's because you're interfering with the Samsung browser by blocking ads, but Samsung's okay with that. that Samsung is allowing that. So that shouldn't be it either. It's, it's, there's, something, there's something more going on here that, that I, I would like to know. I don't know if we'll ever find it. It's a good reminder that, that this stuff is more complicated than people think. And when, when you talk about curating or having a hands-off approach to your app store, whether you're like Apple where it's much more curated or you're, you're Google Play where a little bit more hands-off, either... Either way, things come up, stuff happens, and then either they're not giving enough information or people are upset about it anyway. Yeah. Like I, in, in some ways, I, I guess I admire that they can pull it off at all. Yeah, and the efficient, algorithmically driven customer support doesn't work in this situation. You need a human to explain to you, this is why we rejected your app. And yep. if it's because it blocks ads, then we, we should know that. So we don't waste time making ad blocking things. And Samsung doesn't waste time encouraging people to do it. Uh, and, and, and that's fine. And Google should stand behind that, what, even, even if you think it's wrong. But make that clear. Right now, it's not clear because you got some that aren't blocked and some that are. And it's just a mess. Totally. Nintendo's first mobile game, Mitomo, is coming to North America in March for iOS and Android. Nintendo announced Wednesday you'll be able to pre-register for uh, a notification to tell you that the mobile game is coming starting February 17th uh, by signing up for the new Nintendo account, which is different than your existing ac Nintendo account, though you can use your existing Nintendo account to sign up for the new Nintendo account, and you'll get a special bonus if you do. No word on what that will be or what website you'll need to go to to sign up. But hey, it's a pre-announcement of a pre-registration for a thing. So if you're telling me, I don't know if I can buy into this idea that Nintendo is bad at online stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, they are notoriously bad at this stuff. I don't know why they like to just confuse things. But it's also a way for them to hedge off some of this excitement. There's going to be a lot of excitement around this. One other announcement they made that we don't have written here, um, and there's not a lot of details of that either, but they did say that their most important character will soon be coming to an original mobile game soon, which probably means Mario, and it, we don't know what it means in, in terms of the game. But what it does mean is the, uh, Nintendo's profits are in the hole right now, and mobile is uh, more and more, outside of this Mi Miyatomo thing they're launching with, more and more important to them. So I'm actually really excited about it, but I'm... I'm always frustrated with them doing friends codes and it's a different login and yeah. Ugh, I annoying. mean, it's fine to say starting February 17th, we'll, we'll, you can sign up and, but give me an address maybe, or tell me where to find it. Uh, yeah. and then like, I don't know, maybe like a, I don't know, get ready.com and <laughs> just get excited or something. They yeah. just, they just operate on a different level, I guess. I don't know. Well, folks, uh, submit some stories to us. It helps us figure out what to talk about each day. Uh, we we could have talked about the fact that some people are seeing the podcast section uh, show up in, in Google's music app. Uh, but I don't know. How we decide this? I did a whole video on how I decided, and part of it is you getting on the subreddit and doing some voting, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. That is a look at the headlines. Now, we mentioned... Uh, 
Amazon might be opening some bookstores. Here's what happened. Sandeep Mathrani is the CEO of General Growth Properties, which sounds like something you make up for a TV show, but it's a real company. And they operate big malls, uh, the Galleria here in Glendale, Water Tower uh, in Chicago, um, the uh, Ala Moana, uh, which is, I think, the largest uh, outdoor air, open air mall in the country, in Hawaii. Uh, these, are, these are big, successful malls. And uh, he was doing his earnings call, and one of the people on the call asked him a question about traffic to malls, talking about foot traffic, like people going to the malls. And he talked about, you know, during the holiday season, they were having problems with parking, which means obviously there's plenty of people coming to malls, may not be shopping in as many different places as they used to, but they are spending money. Uh, and in the course of answering the question and talking about traffic and talking about the importance of, of returns and people coming back to the mall to return things, he said, case in point, you go to Amazon opening brick and mortar bookstores and, and their goal is to open, as I understand, 300 to 400 bookstores. And you, you should sit back and say the last mile is all important, which is why Bonobos is opening brick and mortar stores and Warby Parker is opening brick and mortar stores and Birchbox is cutting their overhead to open brick and mortar stores. Now, two things, you know, catch your eye. The first one, obviously, is, whoa, he, he thinks Amazon's going to open 300 to 400 stores, and, and this is a guy in the know, right? He runs malls. It's his business to know. Uh, Amazon probably not too happy that he said that, whether it's true or not. They're not commenting on this. But it also points out that, yeah, you're right. Warby Parker has open stores. Bonobos has open stores. Birchbox is planning to open stores. That's for real. So all of a sudden, Amazon looks like they're part of a trend if they do this. Yeah. Well, I mean, we everyone wants to bring up Apple as an example. Also, the Microsoft stores that exist are kind of an example of this. You take a, a company that's uh, purely sort of a digital uh, place or a place that sells you computers or whatever, and they move to a more brick and mortar status. That's one thing. The weird thing about this and, and some of these other products is that they're kind of being looped around on. They, they all started as things that you would go buy in a, in a bookstore like books. Uh, and now they, they, they really took the wind out of everybody's sails by uh, selling not only books online so you get them straight to your door and you avoid going to the bookstore and shutting down borders and others are indicators of that market change, but also Kindles and eBooks and all of this stuff sort of changed the entire landscape. And now we're going full circle where the company that did that is putting potentially, if this guy's right, and it seems like he's in the know, um, you know, a real footprint in, in retail when it comes to book sales and, and whatever else they're going to sell and push there. I made the comment this morning on the morning stream when we spoke about this in your segment that this feels a little bit like the Death Star reopening Alderaan after they blew it up. <laughs> for Amazon to do this, yeah. Yeah, for Amazon to do that. It still feels a bit like that to me. Uh, on the other hand, and I don't, I don't necessarily mean that as a pejorative, I'm actually pretty excited about this um, because... There's a certain reality to Amazon. The, the reality is this is where we now get our books, whether we get them via the mail in a big hardbound book form or we get it on our Kindle and download it immediately. Whatever the, the method is, they have become that for us among many other products that they sell. So because that's a truth and because we know they're good at that, them opening a store that I can also go into, sit down in, be in a coffee shop for a while, check out a magazine rack while I'm waiting for something, browse a book I'm interested in, whatever. Um, you know, maybe even find rare stuff I can't get online or at the very least price match what they're selling it online. Like all of that sounds good. And it also sounds like this might be the time for it. Like, you know how you swing too far? Maybe we've swung too far into everything needs to be on the internet. And we're just swinging back a little bit. And why not those successful internet folks? Why not let them swing it back to just a little bit more like, all right, that's a place I can go. I mean, they blew up the planet. Why not let them rebuild it, right? It makes right. sense. Exactly. I mean, you can't necessarily bring back all <laughs> four souls you eliminated on Alderaan, but you've got a chance to make a new planet. And well, it, it, let me get to the second part of Mathrani's quote, because I think it bears on what you're talking about here. Uh, he says, it's a very interesting evolution because the cost of the last mile is that important. And again, in the mall business, if you appreciate, which is more focused on fashion, it's very different than a staple business where you're buying commodities. And so, you know, in the mall business, the impact of e-commerce is a lot less. It's actually your friend, not your enemy. So what he's trying to argue, and again, this is this guy on an earnings call trying to justify his multi-billion dollar mall business, so keep that in mind. But he's saying, hey, uh, the last mile is the issue. And I love that they're calling the last mile problem being 
talking to customers face to face. We were just talking about the devs having a problem talking to Google people. When you buy clothing, a lot of times you do want to talk to somebody. I don't, but a lot of people do. Right. Uh, and, and you want to try on the clothes and see if they fit. Uh, and so that's the kind of thing where you can see why a Bonobos, which is a clothing store, would say, well, let's, let's have some outlets where people can go do that if they want. And it goes back to what you said about the Apple store. The reason there are Apple stores, you can buy everything from Apple online. People like to go and play around with it. Even if they end up buying it online later, Apple doesn't care. And so maybe that's what Amazon is experimenting with. And remember, they opened a store in Seattle back on November 2nd. Uh, it, is, it is an experimental store. All the books face forward. They use data from the website to help inform what books they stock. Uh, they price everything the same online or in the store, so you don't go online and go, well, I can get it cheaper mailed to me. Uh, and they do have some Kindle and Fire devices, but they're focusing very much on books. The idea, I think, being people still like to browse bookstores, and Amazon is in the position to say, we make plenty of money selling books to people, even if they come into an Amazon bookstore, don't buy anything, but page through a bunch of things, and then go home and order it online, or even order the ebook for their Kindle, we still made the money. It's still worth it. Yeah, and they have a real chance to do one extra thing there, and that is, I, I would argue, Apple did, and that is to, to have a presence that is a physical location that represents your company well, that gets a lot of foot traffic and has people leaving going, huh, that is a substantial place. It feels super nice in there. I feel like that is a sign that this company that wants my money every year for a new phone or whatever your reason for being there is, I feel like that's a thing that's here to stay. There's, a, there's a, like a tree with roots going on there. I feel like that's a good little extra boost of PR. It's not that Amazon needs a ton of extra help in that department, but to have a place that I could go called Amazon Books and have that sort of experience, maybe even like you mentioned this morning, have it be a place where I can pick up stuff I ordered online and vice versa, uh, is, is really powerful. And you'll walk out going, yeah, Amazon has my back. They're going to be here for a while. I'm happily paying for Prime. Um, and maybe there's some benefits to that in the store. We kind of joked about that this morning, but I think there's real possibility there with Prime members. So it, it, even if it's a lost leader, it seems like a, a, a smart move for them. People are going to be using them anyway. So why not create this place that lets them do all the things they want to do or might want to do and then also walk away with this feeling of, yeah, there is a physical, substantial, tangible thing in my life that I'd like to get products from. And if they pull that off, then I think that they, they win in the same way that Apple's won with their strategies. And there's no and, and it may be a cost savings to say if somebody buys the book in the store, uh, that is going to be cheaper than shipping it to them, or at least maybe the same amount uh, to deliver it to them because they came to the store. If this works for Amazon, if it ends up being true, again, we're going on Mathrani's quote that it's even true. If Amazon does do a big rollout like this and it's successful, maybe they start doing pharmacies. Maybe they start doing grocery stores. You know, Who, know, who knows what other aspects of Amazon.com would make sense for you to say, well, you know what? I do, I do order some things like that on online. Why not get them at the Amazon store because of this and that other, uh, you know, efficiency to it? Well, I have a theory I've formulated since this morning, and I'd like to share it with everybody. All now. right. I think that the first real tangible uh, competition to Costco and Sam's Club will eventually be, not right away, but eventually be the Amazon big box store. And I don't think it sounds crazy at all. They could carry everything we already buy through them. TVs, books, everything. Food, clothes, like what you expect from Costco. But very well could be less expensive and have a real pull and draw for a lot of people who are just wanting to buy from Amazon anyway in a way that Costco doesn't have that kind of cachet. I think that they could be a huge leader in the big box stores, memberships, whatever. Amazon but, warehouse stores. It's yeah, a so working warehouse where you can pick up your orders, yep. order things immediately, or just find something on a shelf and buy it. I mean, that does sound intriguing, doesn't it? It does. And also, don't forget, perfect application for Prime membership because if you've got a Prime membership, that's your way into this new store just like a Costco membership is your way. Right. Oh, yeah. You just make it part of the Prime. Like exactly. you, you now get the streaming videos and the free two-day shipping and membership to the, to the warehouse. And, and you don't have a ton of recruitment time. They're already members. So yeah. you'll get a ton of people day one. I think that that would be huge. And I wouldn't be shocked. Not all my predictions come true, but I wouldn't be shocked if that one has some legs. Well, you know, if Mad Max Fury Road has shown me anything, it's to take some... <laughs> Take some of Scott Johnson's predictions seriously.
so yeah, I, I, uh, that's intriguing. And then if, any, if all of this stuff does happen, then it becomes a conversation of like, how much of this do we want Amazon to do? Are they becoming too big and too powerful over the retail marketplace? But that we've got a while before we really need to talk about that in the physical space. We, there definitely is a question about that in the online space for sure. Hot dogs at Costco, hot dogs at Amazon. I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. Hey, our uh, pick of the day is from a lot of you. We received loads of picks regarding hooking up your phone's audio in your car uh, and some other Bluetooth audio picks. So here, here's a roundup of them. Jason in Seattle uh, says that he likes the iSimple ISB232 Blue Jacks, J-A-X, plugs into your aux jack in your car to add Bluetooth functionality. It's less than 30 bucks. He says it works great. Uh, Yousef from Detroit, uh, likes the HomeSpot NFC enabled Bluetooth audio receiver. It's around $25 to $30. Plugs into your power adapter via USB because he said it's not really meant for the car, but he just used a USB power adapter and an aux cord and it works great. And it's only $25 to $30. Bucks. Uh, Tommy, the newspaper publisher in Maui, longtime, old time Buzz Out Loud listener, uh, said that he likes the Pioneer Deck that sells for less than a hundred bucks and has Bluetooth and an external mic. So you can do Bluetooth conversations through it. Uh, he learned about it from the wire cutter, which is another pick. Uh, just check out the wire cutter at the wirecutter.com uh, for good, good reviews of lots of different things. And then Gary followed up on the photo Bluetooth headphones that he had sent in as a pick a while back said they finally stopped working on January 19th, about a month after he sent them on a trip through the wash. Uh, so he went for a pair of $17 Bluetooth earbuds from Danabos uh, and he'll report back on, on how he likes them as he uses them more. So he's only yeah. been using them for a couple weeks. All those prices are so much better than the stuff that everybody says you should get. I, I'm very intrigued by all of Well, those. and the audio quality of these may not be enough for, for audio files. Uh, I know Nate Langson on the uh, text message podcast was saying that he has just now got to the point where he has found a single pair of Bluetooth headphones that he feels are good enough for him to enjoy audio. And he's he's somebody who really is picky about the quality of his audio. So these may not be good for for those kind of folks. Uh, but if you're like, hey, I just need something you know, to listen to while I jog and I'm listening to spoken word most of the time or something, these may be great. That's right, Dan. Or uh, he was the <laughs> last time he was on the show. He was trying to convince us that the only way to live was to keep buying CDs and forget about these. Episodes. I know, right? He is committed to high quality audio. I will, I will, I will not dispute that man in anything regarding audio quality for sure. <laughs> Uh, send your picks to us, folks. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can find more picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. I got some messages to get to today. Uh, hello from sunny Costa Rica. I always listen to the show every day on, on my way back from work. It's been a while since I do not miss one episode. Best podcast ever. Well, thank you, Costa Rica. Wanted to share a couple of things from last week's episode. I heard uh, that one of the top topics was driving apps. I'd like to let you know that if you ever visit Costa, Costa Rica, Waze is the go-to app. Community's big here. All the maps and roads are up to date. There's no chance you can get lost. Well, there's always a chance, but he, he says it's actually really good. I uh, also wanted to share an interesting article he read about Akamai, the CDN, planning a core internet protocol boost that will increase the speed of sites up to 30%. Uh, this is great news because TCP has been out for a while, so a refresher would be awesome. Uh, thanks a lot. Pura Vida. Uh, and then I, I looked up this article he's talking about. It's a TCP replacement that Akamai is proposing called Giga that would be opened up. Uh, they plan to combine it with Google's Quick uh, uh, protocol and would require IETF approval and adoption by hardware and software people, but would, would speed up connections over TCP. That sounds great. I wish this stuff was less dependent on all the everybody changing and adhering to it. Like this, whenever you say things like hardware and software adoption, yeah, exactly. but that, that is just the nature of the beast, right? If you don't have everything using it, then it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, no, you're totally right. It's like if suddenly, you know, if suddenly all of our, like, our, all of our um, I don't know, water systems could push Kool-Aid through them, they, you know, that'd be great and all, but it means a big change. That's a terrible yeah. example. But, but yes, I, I totally get it. I just always keep hoping beyond hope that someone will say, hey, we found a way to, to tack on top of TCIP and, or TCP IP and it's going to be this easy and, and take no time at all. And it's as if we were never here. And well, yeah, I mean, this wouldn't necessarily be hard to implement. It just means people would have to implement it. Right. There's always that, right? You can say, like, this is easy. You don't have to change a thing, but people have to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, exciting stuff. I think we had a uh, really fun conversation about the Hyperloop on Monday, and a lot of you guys wrote in. Uh, Mark Stevens said that Hyperloop could be great for prime shipping. 
Uh, so instead of having a freight truck, Amazon could use Prime Hyperloop to ship packages from one place to another. Uh, Alan Char suggested it might make a good alternative to air cargo. The travel times seem comparable, and I imagine the weight restrictions can't be much worse than those of air cargo. And uh, and and we got uh, we got some other people, you know, suggesting it could be used for this and that. But I think people are people are intrigued. Their imaginations are running about mm, Hyperloop. That's where they should be. And then finally, Rich from lovely Cleveland uh, was thinking about the iPhone 5SE that is rumored to be coming and be announced in March. He said, what if the 5SE has a better battery, but a smaller screen, uh, thus less strain on the GPU, the battery reduction might be offset by this savings. And Apple may also decide to lower the system on a chip clock speed, which might not be needed for, or which might be needed for heat dissipation anyway. I know it's speculation on speculation, but if the battery life is improved, it might be a surprisingly tempting device. Well, and for, I mean, everybody assumes that this is just for the kind of entry level, I don't want to go full smartphone, I want to get something less expensive, or these need to be phones that are much cheaper in parts of the world that they're trying to expand, like China and others. Um, but yeah, like if you told, I know lots of people in my life, if you told them you had a less expensive option where battery life was king, they don't need to worry about the best performance for games or something else, they would be very interested in a, in a phone like that. Um, that isn't just a cheap phone, but a phone that is specifically designed to take advantage of those kinds of needs like battery life and so on. So yeah, I'm, I'm with him. I think it'd be much more tempting and not just a, here's Apple's attempt to get the lower end of the market. Yeah, just repackaging the same old stuff. Yep. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? We'll have to wait until March 15th or whatever to find out. Uh, that is it for this episode of Daily Tech News Show, Scott Johnson. I'm sad. I'm sad it's over. I am too. Well, all good things must come to an end. As I you know. know. Yeah. It's, uh, but you can get more Scott Johnson. There's there's loads, loads oh, of Scott Johnson. Good, Quality like Scott Johnson too. Not that bulk stuff. Like get the get the primo stuff at frogpants.com. Yeah, don't go to don't go to the big box store. Go to the yeah. The boutique and buy my stuff. Um, no, if uh, people are interested in anything else I have going on, their best place to go is frogpants.com. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Scott Johnson. Always something happening. Absolutely. Go do it. Take a look. Find out. Check out Current Geek. You'll get both, both of us again. Uh, thanks to our patrons who support the show. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash support is how we inform you about the ways to support the show. You can donate by PayPal. I know Patreon isn't for everybody. We, I was looking at the report of, you know, they give me this little report of people leaving. Uh, and sometimes people are saying it's financial and that we totally understand. You just, you know, you, you, you got to do what you got to do. You got to feed yourself first. Uh, there are plenty of other people in the audience that can pick you up. Uh, but some people just want to do PayPal. They just want to do a store. But we are dollars away from getting Peter Wells to do two episodes a month. So if you can uh, support the show, or if, you, if you've been meaning to support the show, or you're new to the show, and you get some value out of it, go to patreon.com slash DTNS and give us a buck. That's all we ask. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can call us, 51259-DAILY. It's 512-593-2459. Catch the show live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern at alphageekradio.com and diamondclub.tv. And visit our website, dailytechnewsshow.com. Back tomorrow with Justin Robert Young. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> Boom. There it is. Great show. Thank well, you. Uh, I saw him at lunch yesterday. The laugher, I mean. Troid. Not the other Oh, one. yeah. He's on a vacation. They're at Snowbird. And at Ski Snowbird. Yeah. I love that. They went I mean, I, first of all, I love that he's on vacation. And then I love that he was like, I'm going to see Snowbird with snow. Yeah, they totally did. It's And it's couldn't have picked a better year. It is so awesome up there right now. Just yeah, it looks like they're having fun. I saw some pictures. Blankets of powdery, awesome ski snow. It's just perfect. Yeah. If you're into that sort of thing, which I'm not, but I, I can appreciate it. You're not a skier? Not really. I don't know. Maybe I grew up too close to it or something. <laughs> it's, it's always the way, right? You never do the thing that's of the place where you live. Yeah, not nearly as much. Or, or the, you know, yeah. if you live in California, <laughs> certain restaurants, you're like, oh, yeah, they're the best. And that's only because you just got one or they were yeah. never before or whatever no uh, jenny did you say about the beach jenny never goes to the yeah. beach i'm closer to the beach than jenny and i never go to the beach most of my vegas friends are near the strip
Same idea, I guess. Although, that's kind of a smart thing. I mean, you're just going to run into tourists and stuff on the Strip. Oh, yeah, no, the Strip is... If you lived there, I'd never go. <laughs> I, just like well, I never went to 6th Street when I lived in Austin. Same thing, same deal. But, um, yeah, they, I, we hung out a little bit. Their girls are stoked. Just the, just the sight of snow, they were just freaking out. Just flipping out. They kept asking me, do you live here all year? Yeah. Oh, does it snow all year long? <laughs> no. I mean, no, this is amazing. I want to take some home with me, but my mom says they won't let me fly with it. I said, I don't think it'll keep. Well, if they, if they take less than three ounces. <laughs> That's true. You can put it in an igloo ice cooler and stick it in the airplane hold. It should be oh, yeah, cold sure, enough. Oh, yeah, sure, you can check it. Yeah. yeah, maybe they could actually, but uh, yeah, they were. I've never seen kids so excited about snow in my life. The first time I saw snow when I was a kid, I was freaked out. It's like, why is it so mushy? And at this time, because uh, I was up in um, Tahoe, it's like, oh, I don't like this. Very uncomfortable. <laughs> it's a very uncomfortable substance. I think <laughs> the first time I saw snow, I was five months old. So, yeah, you were used to it then. Yeah, I don't You're, remember it. I was old pro now. Old five snow pro. or four. The Snow Pro. You want some titles? Yeah. I got one I like, though. Yeah. We yeah. got something something Tumblr pun. Mm-hmm. Amazon and Roebuck, which is the one I like. Mm-hmm. Uh, who blocks the ad blockers? Mm-hmm. Amazon gets, gets physical. Physical. <laughs> that, that's my favorite. Yeah. After that one. That's, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's it. That's so good. Especially because of the whole grease vibe yeah. going on. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. What a win! <laughs> I, it took me a while, and I say a while, but it could might have been like a week. You know how things seem when you're young. But I remember the, having the realization that Olivia Newton-John from the physical song was Sandy from Greece. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, they, so that didn't. Click with didn't you, click me- immediately, yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, Justin's or uh, Brian put up some pictures of them up there. Yeah, right? with the snow helmets, crash Perfect helmets. Day. It's all sunny up there. Oh, lucky. I'm a little jealous. It looks like fun. it's a perfect day. Go skiing in Snowbird Park. <laughs> put on your crash helmets. And ski. What? <laughs> Striker it says, don't mean to blow your mind, but Olivia Newton John was in Xanadu too. Yeah. What? I don't want to freak you out or anything, but she wasn't in anything else. <laughs> That's not true. She That's was not in... true, actually. Yeah, she was in lots of things. It's just the she only She was in a, some movies before Greece. Like small stuff though. Do you have any, can, will a name pop to your head? Can you think of one? No, I just read about it this weekend. Me neither. They're, they're very, like, unknown movies. Was nice. it Xanadu one of them? Maybe. Was that before? No, she was in Xanadu. Yeah, but Xanadu. Yes, that's what started our whole conversation. Uh, Xanadu was after Greece. But, but also, uh, Xanadu was, like, a mainstay at our house because my sisters were so into that movie. And so the, the ELO soundtrack was on constantly. Eileen loves that movie, too. Do yeah. they like uh, roller skating? Yeah, like, oh yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, they did. I don't know. They. Uh, why? Why must you kick me away? I your if... father. <laughs> I am your father. Don't kick me away. <sighs> well, it's probably something you have to get used to. As she gets older. Yeah. For sure. Uh, I wonder if IMDb is the website I've visited the most over the year. Probably not, just because of searches, but. Um, Oh, it was love the first have... website I ever visited. We don't have any way to get that kind of stats, do we? That'd be no. so cool to know. I want to know where I go the most. I bet it's either Google Docs, uh, maybe IMDb. I go there a lot. Do you know how like the CIA has the World Fact Book online? Like, yeah. and, like what if the NSA had one and you could just <laughs> search for your name and it's like, oh, these are your surfing habits? That'd be all right. Whoa, she performed at Eurovision. No way. In 1974? Huh. How'd she do? Britain? No, Olivia Newton-John. Australia. <laughs> Although Australia actually is now part of Eurovision or no? 
And they used to fight. Then they used to not boycott it, but they used to be kind of poopy about it, or something. Somebody what? told me that the Australians didn't like Eurovision for a while, or they were, it's Eurovision. They weren't okay. invited. Right, but they were. No, Australia actually has a special relationship with Eurovision. That's well, what that's, I heard. Maybe that's what I heard is because yeah. they are in, they're in it now, right? They they compete. Yeah, they were allowed. They were given a special invite to join on the like anniversary. Because they were originally, what were they, prison colony colonists from the Queen? <laughs> well, yeah, that's like Georgia, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, she was in a movie called Tomorrow, with spelled T O O. No, that's too also in Funny Things Happen Down Under. <laughs> then Greece, then Xanadu, then Two of a Kind. Remember that movie? Oh, no. yeah, that's a good soundtrack. Horrible movie. Two of a kind, 83. And when I say good soundtrack. Oh, yeah, with Travolta again. They were trying to keep trying that to mess. recapture that. Yeah. Didn't happen. Well, maybe it did. I don't know. Maybe people love that. I don't know. She was in the, an episode of Lost. Oh, just as a performer. Though. She was in the song, though. couple of episodes of Glee. Soundtrack. In it or just her songs were? Just her song, yeah. It wasn't Nikki or Paolo. She was Nikki and Paolo. <laughs> wow. The embodiment she's, of them all. She's diverse actress. She was the spider. <laughs> <laughs> the smoke monster. Uh, T2T2 confirms Australia was only part of last year. Oh, okay. I, I knew there was some talk about it. But I couldn't remember what yeah. the deal But yeah, Eurovision is just for European countries, as I understand it, with occasional exceptions made. It's a very weird thing to watch, I found. I tried to watch some of it. Oh, uh, it's too. so fun. Hard to watch. I loved it. It, it is fun. I just, I don't know what I'm watching, I guess. Yeah. I guess I'm not big on that. I guess maybe that's what I'm supposed to like, but I'm just... Okay, here's the key. You Where, where were you watching it? Uh, over a friend's house and it was a late at night because it was like weird well, no timing. i mean what what service were you watching <laughs> he had it i don't remember what he was using it was my neighbor probably using some because if you can get the feed like. from the bbc with graham norton hosting yeah. Yeah. it adds to the enjoyment i like graham norton yeah i could deal with that yeah the thing i heard was just like it was like watching the gong show international is what it felt like which is fine Maybe again, I'm saying things I should like, but I don't know. I couldn't do it. I tried. My sister loved it. She's she watched the whole thing in Sweden this year. Huh? Yeah. I just got welcomed to the Lexington Peddlers Mall. I think right it's on. the wrong Tom Merritt. Yeah, I'll say. I mean, that's one thing. You, you know, you could call crowdfunding that, I guess, but uh, I don't think it'd be so accurate. Floor space that you're in may not be your tag number. If you're using the wrong tag number, you won't get credit for your sales. This is hilarious. I also got invited to a, a hog marketing seminar recently. Wow. And I had to write back, I'm like, I think you have the wrong Tom Merritt. I did report on pork belly futures when, in my first job in radio. But other than that, I don't know anything about it. I did a lot of things for Steve Johnson. Yeah. Which isn't me. It wasn't me. I wonder how many Tom Merritt's out there are getting angry notes about my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I totally disagree with your opinion on malls. Poor Tom Merritt in Lexington, Kentucky is like, Where, but where'd my peddler's mall acceptance go? Where'd my peddler's go? mall go? <laughs> Why oh, am man. I getting this angry email? Uh, Overwatch back on the 9th. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, I'll, I won't get invited. Maybe you will. No. Maybe. I'm not going to get my hopes up. <laughs> so. so I'm writing another uh, article about movies because that's what's obsessing me lately. On your medium? I'm a medium. Mm -hmm. The first one was Movies That Haunt Me, Avengers Age of Ultron. And now I'm doing an article that defines why certain movies, like what makes a movie that haunts me. It's kind of fun. Cool. Kind of why, why this is on my mind. It was always on your mind. Well, that's actually... Oh, my God. Wait, what movie is that from? 
uh, well, it's from Willie Nelson writing the song no, in I know, the sixties, but, 60s, but when, I don't, it's been mo- used in multiple movies, I think. In a like a, you were always. I don't know. You were always on my mind. Oh, where did Jenny go? I don't know. She poop out. She poofed. She's like, I gotta find what movie that was in. Bye. That was it. As a reminder, if you had access to the closed beta before the break, you will continue to have access during this next phase. Oh, good. Uh, the rich get richer. He says, <laughs> says, we're also looking to recruit more players to help us get an even wider range of perspectives and feedback. So if you're interested in participating, make sure you've, opt- you've opted in. Oh, I've opted in. Yeah, you're in, so. I've opted in. Oh, that game is so good. I actually haven't been playing a lot lately of anything, so. Yeah. Do you, what do you think about these standards uh, in Hearthstone? Do you hear about that? There's a way for them to. Yeah, I need to like pay. I need to sit down and read that again. Uh, but it sounds like something that could either be awesome or go horribly awry, depending on how well it's implemented. And I have to say, the Hearthstone Team Five folks have implemented things very well in the past. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna expect that it will turn out to be a good thing. Yeah, I think they've earned the faith of the community on this one. Yeah, I agree with you. That when you see it, you're just like, oh, really? Whoa. You're like, okay, that's weird. That's real weird, but but also. But it I, does definitely addresses some some issues that people have had. Yeah. About like I've got this huge card set and I just want to play. I don't want to have to play the ladder meta. It's all you know. It's trying to address a lot of those things. Yeah, I'm jazzed about it. As someone who hardly plays anymore, it helps me put it that way. Yeah. Well, that's the key. They want to get they want to get Scott Johnson playing Hearthstone again and not yeah. feel like you're overwhelmed. Yeah, because when you you dip away for a while, you come back and you're like, "What are all these? There are a billion new cards. I don't own any of them. I guess I'm not well, playing." Well, dude, I keep up on the cards. Like I've got most of the cards, not all of them, uh, and I still come back and I'm like, "Oh, you know what? I really need to research this deck more before I decide how, what I'm going to put in it." Like, I, I, and that's not the way I should think. I should just play. I know that, and I would have fun if I just played. But it's it's one of those things where if you're not into building decks, which a lot of people are. But you're like, I just want to, you know, I want to have a decent deck, and then I'm I'm more into the play, uh, and th- and sometimes that will lead to you getting into building decks later. But if you're not there yet, it does it can be kind of daunting. That's the yeah. I think that's what they're trying to do. I think it's something they recognize yeah. as an issue. And Tinbeck points out, wild mode will be just like things are now. So if you want things to be like they are now, you'll yeah, you'll, you'll have, have a way that. to play. Sure, it's the same. I mean, essentially. I mean, even the term standards comes from the magic community. It's like what they have to do. Hey, There's- Jenny made it back. Well, she did. I made it. It was weird. I don't know what happened. I just faded away. It was your turn. I had my weird thing before the show, and now it was yours. Let's all have weird things. That's on Sundays with <laughs> Andrew Maine. Yeah, true it is. I am out of the post. I think I did it without even messing it up. Right on, son. And... I left the post, so Roger is good. I fixed the uh, episode numbers, by the way. If somebody noticed that we did 2678 uh, twice, it's because it was Groundhog Day, is what I'll say now. Oh, uh, it <laughs> might have been me. Right, Tom. Oh, you know, I'm generally pretty good about that, though. No, this was in the blog post, though. It wasn't in the part you do. Uh, you had it right. Oh, okay, yeah, that's yeah. someone else's fault. <laughs> no, I think it was, it was just... <laughs> It's just me. Just um, point me to a Sabaro so I can get my. <laughs> where the, where the, uh, Calzo. That was the only thing I would ever order from a Sabaros. Yeah. And now they're not around. Are they well, gone? They're gone? That's it? I no, there's a gone. few. There's one in um, in San Jose at the mall we always go to yeah, for movies. Sabaros. I think there's one here. I haven't yeah. seen one in forever. I love that. There was one. I think there was one even in Ala Moana. We were just in Ala Moana in December. I think there was a Sparrows there. Well, folks, I just, yeah, W. Scott just one points out that the number mistake was in the video too, because uh, yeah, I copy it over from the blog post. So that makes sense. Uh, Groundhog Day. Same thing. Celebrate. Thanks, everybody. Ground Beef Day. We'll see you tomorrow for Ground Beef Day.